and welcome to another episode of Spring Training on Computer Games. We continue to explore the library of baseball games available on the Retron 5 because it is something where you get a lot of value for your money. Baseball games and sports games in general tend to be very affordable. And there is an easy pick up and play aspect that you simply don't have in modern sports titles you, you get to experience on old cartridges. The RBI Baseball series is still getting yearly entries as evidence to what I'm saying. So if you haven't already guessed, the title we're going to be looking at today is Super Baseball Simulator 1000. This is a game that came out on both the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo. You have the option to play the game with no frills basic mode and it will be a very boring simulation. It's not what you should be advertising. However, there is an option to play with teams that have superpowers. This may be a game arcade-like baseball game. It's not quite NBA Jam, but it is a very unique experience. Let's start off by talking graphics. This is more than a tale of two screens, like a lot of baseball games. You have an interface that looks better while pitching or batting. The fielding is shown from a very far zoomed out perspective. This one not even looking like it's a 16-bit platform. It really looks like this is a basic 8-bit game. So, I'm sure this is where a lot of people would stop at Super Baseball Simulator 1000, about 30 seconds into the gameplay. It really looks like it's going to be a budget title. But you actually be making a mistake. That is where this game and the footage in this review gets interesting. As long as you pick the team from the game's Ultra League, you get to select superpowers for every player in the game. After a bare bones introduction, the game surprises you with some Mode 7 effects and many other display features not found in baseball games at the time. The pitcher batter interface, which is the core of any baseball game, looks appealing, but it looks very plain. Not much to look at when you are outside the game, the menus are as bare basic as possible. On a scale of 1 to 5, the I give Super Baseball Simulator a 2.5 out of 5. There's some appealing things here. You even see some Mode 7. It is used very sparingly, however, and it is something that looks like it was released before the Super Nintendo came out. If you ever had the chance, Google the term EGA graphics. They were used in the mid-80s, and that's where it looks like this game came from. The game has decent music, you won't get tired of it as you make your way through 9 innings. It is unfortunate there isn't a little bit more variety. You do hear some tunes played when you hit a home run, but other than that, it's pretty much one song and some sound effects that sound great when you're using your superpowers. The sound of the ball hitting the bat is about average, but the umpire calls are below average for the Super Nintendo and a lot of the games I've played on the 8-bit NES. It sounds very muffled even when coming out of the retro. So while I do like what's here in the music, the sound scores a 2 out of 5. The sound effects are subpar and music will begin to loop after about 15 seconds. The controls in every aspect of the game are very responsive. The biggest challenge you'll come across is going to be due to the fact that your three outfielders will move in unison. Switching on to superpowers with your players is simply the press of a button and it works every time. I actually read in online strategy guides that you're limited on how often you can use your superpowers, but I made it through a 9 game inning just going full blast with everybody. So on a scale of 1 to 5, I give the controls in Super Baseball Simulator a 4.5 out of 5. The biggest thing in a baseball game is how responsive the input is. There is no noticeable lag. Everything works great. The biggest challenge you're going to have is the three outfielders being stuck together, and that's really more something having to do with game design than it is the actual control. So just how fun is Super Baseball Simulator? 
Terminator 1000, it comes down to how much time you're willing to put in. The aforementioned superpowers that are the core part of the gameplay are a mixed bag. Some of these superpowers are useless, some of them make you an you know, automatic out. It's really something you have to fool around with and figure out. If you do feel like putting in the time, there's even a deeper experience. You have the option to go in and customize all the Ultra Teams, not just updating player stats, you can assign them multiple superpowers of your choice. An incredibly deep two-player experience with a lot of strategy. It's almost like they mistranslated the word simulator with an intense strategy or something. I don't think they understood quite the word they used when they picked that one out. But after playing this game, I am very interested to play other games in the series. This is listed as an individual game, not a port of the NES. It, it does feel very much like an 8-bit game. And from what I've seen gameplay-wise, really does seem similar. There are, however, two sequels to this, released for the Super Famicom in Japan I have never seen, but am definitely interested in playing after trying this, this one out. My final verdict on the game is a 3.5 out of 5 on the fun factor. If you have two people playing this game with teams that they customize to their liking, it's gonna be an experience unlike any other. It's very unlikely that you are going to be looking to experience that on the other hand. It's not something that we do as retro game collectors. The majority of the time we are looking for a single player experience. I have recently heard about something called the Pie Packer that's going to be online multiplayer with cartridges. This is a title, or should I say series, that is an excellent candidate for that. I think that there's something here for the competitive scene given all the options. This is a game you're going to be able to find for under $10. You have a good chance for finding it for about 5 I would give this game a recommendation as a very strong rental that may be moved into the buy category after the Pie Packer is launched. I really think the NES version is going to be the more impressive one. I, I really think they just painted over the NES graphics even though this is accredited as an original title. But we'll... We'll definitely see once I get my hands on the later title. So thank you very much for watching this episode. It's been a pleasure. See you next time on Computer Games.